Britain's obesity crisis. Britain has a serious struggle with obesity, and it didn't start yesterday. Britain's obesity crisis has been with them from generation to generation. What has changed in recent decades is the consciousness of it as a health crisis and the subsequent heightened awareness about the plague. In 2012, Britain's obesity crisis forced the National Health Service, the NHS, into spending an equivalent of $31.6 million on 200 Britons who are too fat to leave home, especially during crisis or disaster. The NHS claims that this amount principally went to people who are weighing 35 stone and more. Such people need up to four visits daily by health workers. But then the analysts said that was just the tip of the iceberg. They said the British health sector and its government has a much larger problem on their hands that transcends quantification in just a few million dollars and pounds. And true to that, the publicly funded healthcare system, which is one of the world's largest single-payer healthcare systems, lamented that an unacceptably significant proportion of its £134 billion pounds 2019 budget went into the management of the obesity-related crisis. Now, before we go too far, first let's find out the scope of the problem. What is obesity? Obesity is a medical condition characterized by excessive body weight and fat. It is the situation that results when the excess body fat has accumulated to the extent that it is having negative physical and physiological effects on the body. How do you know when someone is obese? In most cases, people believe someone is obese when his body size is too big, such that his movement has been inhibited and is unable to move as fast as he should. However, a person doesn't have to wait until he has to be wheeled around before he admits to being obese. People are classified as obese if their body mass index is 30 and above. They are said to be overweight when it is between 25 and 29.9. A person's BMI measurement is obtained by dividing his weight by the square of his height. I have to quickly add that this measurement has allomeric inaccuracies. It does not always give a definitive diagnosis, especially for people with high muscle mass. Then what are the causes of obesity? Several factors can cause obesity and overweight. A major culprit is food intake and eating disorders. When people take to an unhealthy diet, they will pretty soon find that they're gaining weight. This has become typical of Western diets, including British, where refined grains are consumed in high quantity instead of whole grains. Red meat, sugary drinks, and unhealthy snacks, just to mention a few, are the forerunners of obesity. Besides, research has shown that genetics also play a big role in obesity. Certain obesity disorders can also be caused directly by genes, and it can also make someone susceptible to weight gain. Environmental factors are another cause. People who don't have little space at their home and work also lack access to gyms are likely to be physically inactive and gain more weight. People's environment can also encourage them to buy unhealthy foods. Prenatal and postnatal influences also cause obesity. Pregnancy and lactation add to the weight of women. Many nursing mothers tend to eat too much, thereby adding more weight. On the other hand, pregnant women who smoke or who are overweight are likely to have babies that will grow to be obese. Research also shows that those having stress, emotional disturbances, or poor sleep may eat more than usual. Again, an ingredient of being overweight. Those on drugs such as steroid hormones, antidepressants, drugs used to treat mental disorders, and birth control medications are likely to gain weight. Perhaps the most disturbing cause of obesity, especially in Britain, is the sedentary lifestyle. British, on average, are less physically active than other Europeans. Access to TV and the internet confine youths to a place. Office workers sit for most of their day. Most factory workers in Britain work with machines rather than physically doing the work. They spend hours driving or commuting to and from work. Effects of obesity. The effects of obesity can be seen in several complications. Some of them are day-to-day -day challenges, such as sleep apnea and other breathing problems, increased sweating, chronic or acute joint and lower back pain, often feeling very tired. Difficulty doing physical activity or even moving, low confidence and self-esteem, and loneliness. All those pains are caused by too much pressure needed to move the affected parts of the body and the adjoining parts. Also, the body's inability to circulate oxygen and energy properly often leads to tiredness and difficulty in moving. 
The psychological effects of low esteem and loneliness common among the obese can also affect their relationships. This can lead to depression. If left untreated for a prolonged period, obesity may lead to type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, heart disease, infertility or reduced fertility, pregnancy complications such as preeclampsia or gestational diabetes, stroke, fatty liver disease, kidney disease, certain cancers, bowel cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer and womb cancer, gallbladder disease, arthritis, osteoarthritis, particularly of the knees, asthma. On a general note, obesity is believed to be capable of reducing life expectancy by up to 10 years. You can now understand the struggles Britain has with the obesity crisis. As mentioned earlier, the NHS is obviously overwhelmed. Considering the causes of obesity previously highlighted, there's no way Britain won't have a lot of these people. No wonder Tam Fry of the National Obesity Forum once said, the number of super obese people who are housebound is in the hundreds, adding that they are hidden in the care system and no one knows exactly how many there are. It really is a tragedy. The effects of obesity, both mentioned and unmentioned, clearly shows that there's fire on the mountain. To be honest, when you also think about its effects as a health challenge, you'll appreciate the financial implications. Certain cases have illustrated this. When a teenager named Georgia Davis was rushed to hospital in an operation that involved 40 emergency workers, Britain's worsening obesity crisis was brought to the forefront of international public attention. In the mining town of Aberdare, South Wales, firefighters spent eight hours demolishing two walls of the teenager's home before she could be freed from her first floor bedroom. The cost of this operation was about £100,000. Another report was about how 17 firefighters and paramedics had to battle also for eight hours in New Eltham, southeast London, to free Russell Parkin after he fell ill at his home. Some 15 men had to practically drag downstairs this 41-year-old was from his second-floor flat in a giant bowl-shaped sledge before being lifted into a reinforced ambulance. Imagine all that. A report says that over half of all people in Britain are so fat to be considered either overweight or obese. The related illnesses, as mentioned earlier, are costing the NHS more than £4 billion on average and services are only struggling to cope. According to some health trusts, patients have had to be sent to zoo vets for body scans. The NHS in Yorkshire is reported to have already spent £10 million just on beefed-up ambulances and stretchers. The undertakers, cemeteries and crematoriums in the country are also under serious pressure – It's challenging for them to handle their newly giant clients whose appetite for food or lifestyle has led them into an early grave. In extreme situations, cranes have had to be used more typically on building sites to lower coffins as big as wardrobes into especially widened burial plots. How to prevent obesity? If you're living in the UK and not yet obese, you must realise that you're at risk and must deliberately work toward preventing it. And the authorities should also realise that the epidemic didn't just flash over the country like a wildfire. It smouldered and then slowly grew year in, year out. Yet all hope is not lost. When positive changes come from the society and government changes policies, schools, businesses, NGOs, communities and families must all be carried along in preventing it. This will facilitate the key behavioural and lifestyle changes needed to combat this health and economic saboteur. For instance, folks should be encouraged to limit their intake of unhealthy foods such as refined grains, sweet potatoes, sugars, red meats, processed meats and beverages. They should increase their physical activity. Everyone should also reduce television time while the cost of watching per hour may be deliberately increased. Screen time and gadgets and sit time should also be controlled. Medical practitioners should up their antes to help reduce cases of sleep-related issues and other mental disorders. Since prevention is better than cure, emphasis should be on preventing obesity. If that is on the course, Britain's obesity crisis may soon subside. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe buttons. Goodbye and stay safe. This is Learning Canteen.